We're here with my favorite booktube readathon content, and that is the weenie vlogs. Listen, it's winter ween, summer ween, and weekend ween, so I have dubbed them the weenie vlogs. Is it silly? Yes. Does it make me laugh? Absolutely. So what this is, if you haven't already heard of it, let me introduce you, my friends. Come along with me. It is a readathon that is hosted by Gabby from Gabby Reads and Olivia from Olivia Reads a Latte. And it is to bring spooky books into times of the year where you are not normally reading spooky reads. So, what we're doing is January 3rd through the January 9th, we are doing a readathon where you have five prompts. So, there is to, um, I'm not going to get these in order, but there is to read a novella, there is to read a book in the dark, read a book with snow on the cover, read a book set in a wintry setting, and to read a book that gives you thrills and chills. Now I will say we actually are at like 10 p.m. or something on the first day of Winterween because I did have to work today so I did not get much time to film any content or do any reading but I did do some reading. So I actually got um, through chapter one of A History of Wild Places by Shay Earnshaw while I was at work. And what I'll say so far is that it's very well written. This book as far as I can tell so far it's about a private investigator who is asked to search for this woman who writes these really creepy kind of like goosebumpy children's books and she goes missing and people are like oh well she did it on purpose it's a publicity stunt and he's trying to find her but what she was going out to look for is this old place that people think is not there anymore called pastoral and it's kind of like a cult is what it seems like these people living this like perfect life in this perfect like commune and he's trying to find it I don't know in the first chapter, but I'm going to go ahead and assume that he finds it. And it says on the summary that no one, once you get into pastoral, is allowed to leave or come in because they're afraid of this virus called the rot getting into pastoral. I don't know what's going to happen in this, but so far the main character has this like ability where when he touches something, he can kind of like see the memories from that person, whether they're dead or alive. So I didn't realize, I guess this is like magical surrealism. It's like kind of fantasy. I don't know, but I'm really enjoying it so far. So this I'm hoping to have a winter vibe. I don't know. Listen, I'm going to count it as a winter vibe because it's giving me the vibes of winter. Anyway, what I'm going to do right now, because I can't wait. I can't wait. Like, I can't wait. I know it's late at night. I know I need to do um, editing for a video, but listen, the time is right. I want to read Comfort Me With Apples by Catherine M. Valente. Uh, I think this is going to be the one that I read in the dark. Um, or it's going to be the novella. I don't know. I want to read it in the dark. So I think what I'm going to do is just like sit on my couch, pour a glass of red wine, and hopefully read this from cover to cover. Uh, this is a sci-fi. All I know is it's supposed to be about this like perfect marriage, but then it ends up being not so perfect as it does. I don't know. Kayla recommended it. I love her, love her taste. So I'm down to ride. So what I'm going to do is I am hopefully hope, going to read this in one setting and then I'll come back to you with what it's about but I'm so excited. So let's get to reading in the dark. Okay, I had to pause. Um, I got to page 63, and I think that means that I'm like, like fifth, I'm gonna say 58% of the way through the book. That's gonna be my guess. Um, I'm really liking it so far. It's got like that weird ass bunny vibes, but I had to stop because my eyes are really bothering me because I've had my contacts in for a long time and I've had makeup on for a long time. So I need to wash my face and then I might, I want to know what's going on. I might continue with the book or I might start editing my video. I don't know. It's midnight. I don't know. We'll see. Hello. It is the second day of winter ween. Oh my God. It's so gloomy and gross outside. I ended up sleeping until noon. <laughs> um, but I did stay up late last night because I did finish. Start and finished. 
I'm editing that vlog or not vlog that video so that was pretty cool and I did end up finishing comfort me with apples but I need to ruminate on my thoughts about this because I am like reeling I am so confused so I am going to not tell you what I think yet because I honestly have no idea but I do really want to go to Duncan because it is so it's gloomy it's gross outside and I already need to go to my PO box anyway because I'm hoping that those novellas that I bought will be there um that I want to read for this vlog so I'm gonna go there and I'm gonna go to Duncan and hopefully wake up Whew. let's go a wind stirs over the grid rushing through our hair chilling our skin and I catch Levi's eyes straying on me then flicking out beyond the circle he's searching for me for the comfort and assurance she provides it wasn't there. <sighs> Barnes and Noble. Where are my freaking books, yo? It's her. But she has slipped away somewhere out of sight. As most of you know, he continues. I wonder if something in Hi. Merry Christmas. Merry late Christmas. <laughs> Your package finally arrived. The Grace is finally home from Tennessee. <laughs> so I got some. Okay, I didn't realize it said sweet rose. So just know that going in. Cheers. It's definitely it sweet. sweet. <laughs> <laughs> um, I didn't wrap it because I just got it just now. Ooh, oh my gosh. They feel so good. Oh my god, and you got it in black? Oh, uh, and I got the ones with pockets. God bless you. Oh my god. Okay, look at this booty. Ooh, oh my god, it's the TikTok leggings. Grace is obsessed with TikTok. Yes. The best color too. Oh my gosh. They have pockets. That's incredible. Well, I thought that um the black color I was like would show less like the really? the scrunching, but I was like it would be more appropriate if you did want to wear them outside right. Right. so that you yeah. could kind of pull it off. Thank you. Yo, it's the same day, but it's 9 p.m. because I have not done shit. I have not done anything today. Well, I did my laundry. Didn't put it away, though, because those are two very different activities. I uh, did my dishes. Did put those away. I did take out my garbage and check the mail. And I got Duncan and posted a video and responded to some emails. Okay, listen, this is making it sound like I was very productive today, but, like, trust me, I wasn't. I could not get myself to, like, give a single shit about anything. I'm still in my freaking see it. I'm still in my freaking sweatpants. Um, not planning on getting out of them at 39 p.m. Like, we're in our pajamas. We're staying in our pajamas. But I have been listening to the audiobook for History of Wild Places, and I got to page 234 so far. But there is, like, fantasy as well that I was not anticipating. Like, I thought it was just gonna be a cult. But this whole, like, the rot, I'm like, is it real? Is it not real? Like, what is it? Like, why does it do this? Like, oh my god, it's kind of gross. But it's, like, gross, but I want it to be more gross. Like, I want to hear more about the rot. The rot is what I'm interested in. Like, what is happening? Shay Earnshaw, why is mud coming out of people's mouths? Like, I'm entertained. Anyway, I'm really enjoying it, loving it so far. And then also, I'm gonna talk to you about Comfort Me With Apples. So, um, this is really, really hard to talk about without spoiling it. And honestly, like, I want to spoil it. So, I am gonna tell you the actual summary of this book, which in my opinion is spoils. Like, it is spoils. It is a spoiler. So, if you don't want to hear that, I'm going to put spoiler up right here, like probably across my freaking face. And you could just skip to the part where you don't hear about it anymore. It's only 100 pages. It's easy to read. Um, but I want to talk about it. And I don't want to just be vague because you have to be so vague. So anyway, I'm so sorry. This is spoilers. But so what this book is actually about is the I told you it was about this husband and wife that have a perfect life. So the very first sentence is I was made for him. And if that ends up being true. So this is about Adam and Eve. But really, it's about like her husband is Adam. And God is his dad, obviously. And God made Adam in his image. But then Adam is all butt hurt because he's like, well, why does the bear get to have a wife? Why does like the freaking fish get to have a husband like I want somebody make somebody like me so the gods like okay sure fam whatever so he makes some rando and then Adam's like she is trashed she's not good enough and then God's like okay whatever so they keep trying over and over again like re-frankensteining you know this event over and over again making new broads but then 
He just is like, no, they're too smart. They're too this. They're too outspoken. They see too clearly. Blah, 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 blah. So they start making these eaves or whatever out of parts of him. And our main character, Sophia, is made out of a part of his eye. And that ends up, like, you can kind of tell. That ends up being the downfall is that he says she can see too much. She starts kind of seeing through it. And then Adam is like, okay, well, I'll just kill you and try again. Like, don't worry about it, fam. It's so good. Now, here's the thing. Okay, um... Here's the thing. This is why I love this book. I'm going to give it four and a half stars. The reason I love this book is because of this is all, in my opinion, a big allegory on misogyny <laughs> because it's literally God saying, I'm going to create a man in my image, but the woman is going to be created to be subservient to the man. And if she is not subservient, I'm going to kill her because that's what God's doing. God's killing these women because they're not good enough for Adam and they're not good enough like pets basically so anytime they're smart have autonomy identity like um, any freedom anything when they desire something other than adam god just kills them and tries again and it's like they've tried hundreds of times and it's like okay well we're gonna make the perfect woman that will be like the perfect <sighs> sub basically um it's so fucking good okay I'm going to end, I'm going to end spoilers now. I'm so sorry. Ending the spoilers and just tell you that I gave this four and a half stars. I really enjoyed it. It's quite short. I will reread this in the future. I really liked it. And I see why it got nominated for the Goodreads Horror. Um, and I see why it was like higher on the list, even though it, I think it had just come out. I don't know. But I really enjoyed it. And I'm going to make some dinner. And I'm telling myself I'm going to put away my laundry. I don't know if I will. I hope I will. But um, I'll probably catch up with you either later tonight with an update or tomorrow morning. <laughs> I think my new camera setup is just putting you in different cabinets in my kitchen. Hey, it's Katie. It's a new day of winter ween. Day three. I'm in a new sweater because I got freaking feta juice all over my other one last night. Feta juice, you ask? It's when you open a new package of uncrumbled feta and the freaking juice just gets all over ya. <sighs> Why does it happen every time? It's almost like I forget because the crumbled feta, no juice, no juice. And I usually get the crumbled feta, but then when they don't got that or when the uncrumbled feta is way cheaper, I'll buy that. And then I always get freaking covered in Greek goo. Why am I telling you this? I finished A History of Wild Places. I think I'm gonna give it four and a five. Sitting on it, I might end up giving it three and a half. I'm not sure. I think it's a four because it is really good. Like, but I think that I just like, wasn't, like I was gripped, but then in the end, in the very end, I didn't find myself like as interested as I thought I would be, but it's really, I don't know. It's really good. Hmm. I think I'm gonna give it four stars. I might hit you back up later with more of a reflection on this not totally sure but we're gonna go back to the post office because i saw to god i saw to god there needs to be these freaking novellas there because i want to read the freaking books even though i need to read tinder as a flesh anyway we're going back to the post office and you know we're going back to duncan you know we're going back to duncan because i am i because I don't have a good reason. I don't have a good reason. I'm trying to like stand here and like make good reasons for my decisions. And I don't have any. I don't have any. I just hate money, apparently. Do I drink more coffee on this channel than Olivia Reads a Latte? It's up for debate. Am I changing my channel name to Katie Reads a Latte and just completely stealing Olivia's life? Perhaps. Wow, this is the weirdest intro of a day. I couldn't, uh, I couldn't reach the, the tip thing. Oh, okay. right, thank you. Go. Yeah. Oh, oh it's okay. Thank, thank you. you. She just saved me. I was about to make a horrible decision. <laughs> Listen. Bad angle. Actually, it's not that bad. Anyway, um, I'm in the post office parking lot, but I've got a rush because I called and made 
an appointment to get my Toyota RAV4 checked out because it's had a sign saying that maintenance is required for like a month and I haven't gone. I'm pretty sure it's just like an oil something. I don't know. Anyway, but um, I don't have very long to get there, but it took a long time to get the package because they couldn't find it. So I was there for like 15 minutes. But let me tell you, there was a guy that came and dropped off a package with a freaking bird in it. Literally on the side, it said, um, like caution live bird inside. And he was not being careful with this box. So I was like, there's not a bird in there. He just like repackaged it. And then he started making noise and I, he, he left and I looked at the woman and I was like, is there a bird in there? And she was like, oh yeah, he comes in here and does this all the time. I'm like, is he a bird breeder? Like what is happening? Anyway, so I got the box. Let's see. Oh, they are all three in here. They're so tiny. Oh my God. Look at how freaking cute. Oh my God. This is like a book for a Polly Pocket. Okay. Now a major motion picture. Are we having a movie night? Um, excuse me? So it's We Need to Do Something by Max Booth. This, I'm definitely wanting to read this for Winterween. Empress of Salt and Fortune and When the Tiger Came Down the Mountain. These are so cute. Oh my God, I am deceased. I need to race to my Toyota appointment, but I'll either be reading We Need to Do Something or um, Tinder is the Flesh when I get there. It's gonna take two hours, give or take, maybe more. So I'm actually going to walk around and read my book like outside, even though it's cold as shit. And tell me like, why am I in my freaking sweatpants when like every person that works here is so hot. It's like insane how hot all of these Toyota workers are. Like what is going on? <laughs> I came into the bathroom again because I needed to tell you about this book, but real quick, this is taking so fucking long. Like I've been here since like 12.45 and it's 3.30. It's an oil change. Like how long can it fucking take? But anyway, this book is fucking wild. Oh my God. There's no chapters, which is super annoying. Like I need there to be some breaks, you know? But um, it's about this family who during like a tornado scare, they go, they go um, into the bathroom because that's like the safest place to be. And they get trapped in there because like a tree blocks them in and they're already like a very um, unstable family. And it's like, I don't know, it's fucking wild. There's some shit going on that I'm like, I'm not sure if it's in the main character's head or like if the shit's actually happening, but like, it's kind of terrifying. It's 4 p.m. and I'm just leaving. That hurts. That, that hurted. That was, um, that was a very long time. That was my entire day. I mean, it was like four hours, but still, that was like my entire day. Um, so I think I'm going to go home. Oh, I kind of want to go to a half price books, but then again, Grace wants to go to the grocery store. So I'm probably going to go to the grocery store with her. I don't know. I'm annoyed, but I am very much liking this book. I got to page, what page did I get to? I got to 76 and I'm sure there's so many people out there going, Oh my God, Katie, how's it possible that in like three hours you only read 76 pages. And what I would say to that is why do you bitches never believe me when I tell you I read slow? You never believe me. You never believe me. I read really slow. <laughs>
What's up? You're back at the kitchen cabinet. And I went grocery shopping with Grace and forgot to really film any of it, so LOL. But I got some hair dye, um, spicy salsa, you know, stuff like that. But when I came home, I had a package. So if you've ever wondered, I don't see why you would, but if you've ever wondered what I smell like, it's this. I'm literally obsessed. It's um, Black Opium by Yves Saint Laurent, but it's Black Opium Intense. So there's the pink one. They look the same, but then like the center's pink. That's like the more effeminate one. Um, but then this one is the blue one and they don't sell it at Ulta and Sephora anymore for some reason. Like, I don't understand. Oh, good God. <laughs> this is not... <laughs> uh, but I just got it in the mail. Jesus Christ. Okay. This is like Fort Knox. Like, why is it so hard to open? And I want to show you guys because the bottle is so pretty. Stunning. So this is what it looks like. Ah, it's so pretty. Mmm, it smells so good. Anyway, um, this is cool and exciting, and that's really all I had to say. Penguin Random House Audio presents The Push by Ashley Audrain. Read for you by Marin Ireland. For Oscar and Waverly. It is often said that the first sound we hear in the womb is our mother's heartbeat. Actually, the first sound to vibrate our newly developed hearing apparatus is the pulse of our mother's blood through her veins and arteries. We vibrate to that primordial rhythm even before we have ears to hear. Before we were conceived, we existed in part as an egg in our mother's ovary. Anything for you. You've all dressed up. The children are in matching plaid, sitting on the leather ottoman as your wife takes their picture with her phone. The girl is holding the boy's hand. You are fiddling with the record player at the back of the room and your wife is speaking to you, but you hold up a finger. You've almost got it. The girl jumps up and your wife, she sweeps up the boy and they spin. You lift a drink, scotch, and sip it once, twice, and slink from the record like it's a sleeping baby. That's how you always start to dance. You take him, he throws his head back, you tip him upside down. Your daughter reaches up for daddy's kiss and your wife holds your drink for you. She sways over to the tree and adjusts. Hi, hello. It is winterween, day four, and I'm about to go on a walk because... My blood sugar is a little high, which I know going on a walk, it's going to get low. But anyway, I'm going to go on a walk around my neighborhood, hoping it's not freezing like it was yesterday, and read We Need to Do Something. I am that far. Anyway, uh, but last night, I completely forgot to tell you that I started and finished The Push by Ashley Audrain. So this is a reread. I read it physically last January, and then I listened to the audio this January. And oh my God, five out of five stars, still a favorite, still stunning. Oh my God. And this is one of those books, and this doesn't happen to me a lot, where I remember everything. Like there was not a single page of this book and I was following along in the book and highlighting. There was not anything that happened that I didn't remember. And I knew exactly what was going to happen on the next page. Like this is riveting. The chapters are super short. I know I've talked about it a million times. I'll, I'll be very, very brief. Um, this is about uh, mom, it's about this woman who becomes a mother because her husband really wants a baby and she had a really difficult time with her mom and she doesn't want to become like her mom. And then it's like a self-fulfilling prophecy that she does kind of become like her mom. But then when she has a baby, she doesn't feel a connection to it. And she thinks that there's something wrong with her daughter. And she's like, she's kind of like the spawn of Satan, but everybody else is telling her that she's wrong and not seeing it. And then you're also questioning the mom but then also questioning the kid, like, what is up, bro? It's so good. It's so good. Just very, it's Rosemary's baby. Anyway, um, it's fantastic. So that's another read down for winter ween. Let's go on a walk. Wow. 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 I had to literally, there was so many points where I was just stopping and going, what? And there's like people, you know, in my apartment complex that are like, what is she doing? I'm like, don't look at me. Okay. There was a point I had to sit on the ground. I had to sit on the ground in the parking lot and read because what? 
what the fuck? Oh my God. I want to see this movie. So apparently it is a movie. Somebody messaged me on Instagram and said that this is a movie on Insta on um, Amazon Prime, but that it's not as good as the book. And I'm like, I don't even care. Like, I want to see it. This is wow. Wow. This is so good. This is five stars. I absolutely loved it. Now, obviously, okay, here's the thing. I'm going to warn you because this is something where people get so mad about this. So I will tell you that this is kind of an open ending. Um, so if you really hate that, don't read it. But it was one of those things where at the very end, I was like, wait, what the fuck? Like, I was like flipping like, where's the ending? And then I was like, no, it made total sense. It made total sense. Like it couldn't have ended any other, any other way. It ended perfectly, to be honest. Um, I actually feel like the ending was perfect. Like this is so good. This book is so good. Now I will say this book is scary. This is very scary. Like in my opinion, this is probably like top five, like scariest books I've ever read. To me, I thought that it was very gory, very creepy. The isolation, it's just scary. So highly recommend if you can handle it. All right, I have decided that I'm going to pick up physically Tinder is the Flesh. I don't know if I'll finish it in time for the end of this vlog, but I'm gonna pick this up and I'm also gonna buy the audiobook for Near the Bone. No idea what it is about, but I've had so many people recommending it to me, especially for like the winter book or like maybe snow on the cover i don't know but so many people have been recommending it and saying that it was like one of their favorite horror books or that it was their favorite horror book of 2021 and i'm pretty sure gabby it was her favorite horror book of 2021 so gonna pick that up but i went and got some stuff from my p.o box um i believe it's a book so we're gonna open that up and it's from greta wallach this is freaking precious look at that that is so cute oh Oh my god, there's stickers in here. All oh, these are stunning. Hold on. Oh my gosh, these are so beautiful. Oh, holy shit. Okay, um, I want to let y'all know something that my mom said where I was like, wow, you're a genius. Is that, you know that print where I'm at my bookshelf and it's behind me and it says Medusa was framed? So I drew that and then, like, all of that is from me. And she was like, you should do merch of the Medusa bust. And I was like, that would be so cool because I would buy that. Like, even if it wasn't my merch, like if I just saw that in the store, I would buy it. So that is so funny that she sent this. I'm gonna read the note to myself just in case it's personal and then I'll be right back. Oh my gosh, it's so cute. Thank you, Greta, so much. And then we have what I assume is a book. Okay, I had to check. I was like, what if this is for Grace? And I'm just like opening it. Okay, oh, satisfying. What? I think I've heard I've heard of this, right? I've heard of this. Convenience store woman by Sayaka Murata. This is so freaking tiny. Who said this? Okay, this book wasn't on your list, but hear me out. Love that. Okay. It's a cute read you can finish in one sitting. Love that even more. And the cover makes me smile. Yes, it does. Uh, when I walk past my bookshelves. Thanks for the laughs and getting me out of a five-year reading slump from Nikki. I'm so sorry. That's a, that's a long time. Good God. Um, this is so freaking cute. Look at this. this is precious national bestseller, a celebration of nonconformity that is both joyous and unsettling. New Yorker best books of the year. What? That is so cool. Oh, it's blurred by Sally Rooney. That is so dope. Oh my God. Nikki, thank you. How do you guys like just being put in totally random places in my apartment? Because I'm kind of digging it. Okay, it is late at night now. It's like midnight, basically. Um, I did read an entire book today and finish another book. I already told you about finishing we need to do something. But then I also started and read the entirety of Near the Bone. <sighs> It was fine. It was fine. Um, I'm very disappointed. One, because I thought I'd really love it and so many people loved it. But I'm also really disappointed in the way the book went because basically like what I thought, I didn't know anything about the book going in for starters. So I don't know what the summary says, but what it seems like is like there's these people that are, that are like trying to find cryptids, which is like, I get like kind of like um, Bigfoot and the Loch Ness Monster and stuff like that. And then there's also our main character who has this like horribly abusive husband, you know, that's living in the woods and she's not allowed to go anywhere. She's not allowed to like see anybody or come in contact with anyone. And that's kind of sus, you know, it's supposed to be sus. But then there's also this like Sasquatch in the woods. And here's the thing. I wanted to know about the fucking Sasquatch. Like Bigfoot, hello? 
Like what? Yeah, there's a Bigfoot? Like the fuck? But then it, the story is really about the main character's stupid ass husband who's a piece of shit. And like, here's the thing, it's not bad. It is not bad. And the whole storyline behind her and how she came to be with this guy is interesting, but it's not the story that I wanted. Like it, if that's the way that the story was gonna go, we needed like more, but then if that's the way the story was gonna go, why the fuck was Bigfoot even involved? And also I don't like stories where there's a monster, but you never really like see the monster. Like it's just out there in the woods and it's like making noise. I'm like, oak okay, ant, okay, ant. Like scare me. Sasquatch is just a side character. And, and I, if you're gonna say Sasquatch, it needs to be a main character. Do you know what I'm saying? It needs to be the main villain. Anyway, it was okay. But I'm actually considering because I have to work like all day tomorrow and all day the next day. And the next day, I'm considering not filming on Sunday and having this be like a six day readathon so that I can post this video on Sunday. So in order to do that, I need to get freaking cracking. I don't know if I'll finish this book by the end of the video, but I do want to sit down and read the first one or two chapters. And I'm gonna bring my wine and hope that I don't vomit. Okay, let's begin. Okay, I already hate this. They nibble away at my brain, drinking the juice of my heart, and they tell me bedtime stories. Like, we're not even on page one yet, okay? Again, not even on page one, and its expression was so human that it filled me with horror. The first line, like, I'm literally terrified. Like, this book is gonna fuck me up. The first line. Guys, I, I'm not making this shit up. Carcass, cut in half, stunner, slaughter line, spray wash, these words appear in his head and strike him, destroy him. But they're not just words. They're, I can't keep going. You guys are literally going to click off. You're clicking off. This is like terrifying. The planet is going to bust at any minute. You'll see, son. It's either going to blow, be blown to bits, or all of us are going to die from some plague. Oh my, oh my god. Okay, that, okay. It's like gross, but it's okay. But it's kind of funny. But it's kind of funny. I serve my family special food. It's meat, like I've always served, but tastier. You've got, you, you gotta be shitting me. Okay, finish chapter one. Nothing like, oh God, I'm, I'm being so terrible by saying nothing terrible is happening, nothing gross has happened. We're just talking about what's going on in the world, but they got to the point really quick. Like, they got to the point really fast. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and read chapter two. Okay, um, I finished chapter two. And one thing I have to say, these paragraphs are so goddamn long. I swear to God, like these paragraphs be taking up the whole goddamn page. I'm like, hello, Augustina, like let's let's get to the damn point. You know what I'm saying? Um, but I really like it. The writing is really good. And I don't remember if I told you what this book was about. So I'll be brief. It's very brief. It's like where a virus um, affects all animals and their meat or like they become poisonous to humans and what I didn't realize is like even if they scratch you you'll die so they can't eat meat anymore so then now humans have resorted to cannibalism and what I'm realizing that's so interesting about this so far is how humans like compartmentalize it and how they market it and like capitalism and consumerism like is using it like the, like they talk about like a commercial about eating humans and like how it's special meat and like oh it's tastier than like cows and stuff and it's so much better because they want to make it palatable so that people will buy it so that they can like make money on it and the thing that i think is so wild is that this guy is like a butcher but then he's saying that like he doesn't want to do it but that he has to do it because he doesn't know how to do anything else and he's really good at it and i'm like that makes sense like that's relatable anyway I'm gonna read chapter three and see how it goes. Oh, oh, what? Oh, oh my God. Wow. Wow, wow. Oh my God. Whew. How the hell are you gonna eat raw meat? Like it's a taste test. You just go, just take a bite out of this lady's arm? Like it's raw meat. Like that's gotta make you sick. Like we don't eat raw meat, right? Like, we, we don't eat raw animal. Like, am, am I wrong? Wow. 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 Oh my God. Oh shit. Oh shit. Things are getting 
Interesting. Okay, no, no, no. Why is it that lip, like killing someone, like butchering a human being, why is it I'm like, okay, I can wrap my mind around this. I see, I see what's happening. Okay, got it. Breeding them, everything. I'm like, okay, okay. But piece by piece over a slow amount of time, That is so fucking horrifying. That is so fucking horrifying. Like, I can't. That got me. Like, that, I was like, no, mm -mm. count me out, count me out. No, do it all at once. Butcher the whole damn thing at once. I can't do this. Also, I have a snack because my blood sugar is low. I knew my stupid diabetes blood sugar would freaking come to betray me. It's like, Katie, I know you don't want to eat anything, but psych, you have to, bitch, or you're going to die. Anyway, I'm eating veggie straws, which you would think would be perfect. I'm like big brain time. I'm eating veggie straws and you'd think that would be good, but no. Now I'm just sitting here thinking that this salty crunchiness is what human meat would taste like. Also, I'm on chapter seven. I feel like I was supposed to update you at different parts and I'm just blowing through it. Okay, I needed more wine. I think I'm gonna sign off for tonight because it is very late and I'm on chapter 11. I got way farther than I was thinking. I thought I was only gonna read the first two chapters, but like I'm having to stop myself from continuing reading because am I a sicko? Like I'm loving this so much. Like this is so good. And honestly, like I'm disgusting myself a little bit with how much I'm enjoying it. So this is gonna be it for tonight. Yo, it is late on this day when I'm updating you because I thought that I was going to have to work all day and then I was just laying in my bed before work like, oh my God, I just don't, I don't want to go, I don't want to go. And then I got a text and was like, do you want the night off? There's like literally no reservations. And I was like, bet. So I have been reading Tinder is the Flesh. Listen, there are things that are going to happen to you in your life that are going to make you realize things about yourself. And I think I'm realizing that I'm like an actual psycho. Like I ha I've got to be crazy because I fucking love this book. I love it. I got to page 92. I think when I stopped talking to you last night, I was at page 50. I got to page 92 sitting in the post office parking lot. Like I was just sitting there, like I dro dropped something off and I was just sitting there reading and I could not stop. And I swear, I'm sure there are people walking by like, what the fuck is she reading? And then also when I was driving, cause I'm in a liquor store, what's up? Um, I'm in a liquor store and every stoplight, I was like, like reading the book. And then even now I'm about to sit in this parking lot and read a chapter and then go in and buy my mezcal and then come out and read a chapter and then maybe go to Chick-fil-A and read a chapter. Like I, I can't put into words why I like this book yet because everything I'm trying to say to myself, I can't even look you in, in the eye. Do you notice? I can't look you in the eye. Um, everything I'm saying to myself to justify why I like this book just doesn't seem like a good enough justification for like, how dare I like this book? Do you know what I'm saying? Okay, anyway, I'm gonna get back to it.
I'm reading this while watching this old sprint of Kayla and Aaron, and she's reading Tinder as the Flesh, and it's so funny. Like, I am obsessed because, like, look at that. <laughs> That's me, Aaron. That is me. And I can't wait because she finished it in this um, reading sprint. So I don't know if I'll be able to finish it tonight. I might end up finishing it tomorrow because I'm... I'm just obsessed. I am obsessed. I am loving this so much. And we just got to a part that made me be like, what? Oh my God. But the thing is, the thing about this book is that it makes perfect sense. Like I see all of this happening. Like if this was a situation that we faced in the world with this virus, I a thousand percent believe that everything in this book would happen. Like I... I think this author nailed it, like nailed it. And it is so scary, but it is giving you a look at like how fucking terrifying humanity is, like how terrifying people are. Like people have such deep levels of psychosis, like myself included apparently, since I love this book, but like it's fucked up. Like capitalism, consumerism, just marketing in general, like people's greed and it's just... It's terrifying. Anyway, um, they're about to end the sprint. And while they end the sprint and are talking, I am trying to half watch it, even though I've watched this sprint like seven times, but half watch it, half edit this video because I want it to come out on Sunday. So I'm going to get back to it. <laughs> Hi. Uh, <laughs> it's day six of winterween and i was actually just gonna pop on here and tell you about how i started the graveyard book by neil gaiman last night and i've been listening to it today i have all faith that i'll finish it today because it's a middle grade so it's really short but i'm listening to the audio and it's performed by neil gaiman and it's so good it's like about a boy who is raised in a graveyard and like he's alive but everybody else is dead and like I don't know. I don't really know like where it's going, but it's fun. It's good. And Neil Gaiman is such a good audio performer. Like I listened to Caroline by him and then now the graveyard book and he's like my favorite narrator. But anyway, um, I wanted to show you, uh, this is disgusting. So if you, it like medically is gross. Okay. So if you don't want to see it, don't look, but, um, I just took off my sensor. Um, like I just put this over patch on it because it's coming off and I knew like I could see there that it was red and I took it off and I was like what the fuck like it's like black underneath and I was like why is that happening and let me show you what in the world like oh my god what is that is horrifying and like this part is not gross because I mean it's not that gross but um just so you know that's like the little thing it's like not it's like a freaking angel's hair and that did that oh my god like no wonder it was hurting so much yikes um, i'm about to put on another one well i already did i put on this one and you can tell it's kind of bleeding but it's not that bad but i'm gonna put on a new one and hope that that one works out better because that has never happened to me before so i just take this one out ew this one's so gross i'm gonna clean this There is like literally no better way of getting this footage. I am so sorry. <laughs> but then you snap this in, if I can do it. Okay, yeah, two clicks. Did you see it? Cool. This is what it's supposed to look like. Oh, and look, that's a, um, you can't see it. That's a sticker that uh, Sabrina, Grace's daughter, gave me. And she was like, every time you come over, I'm gonna give you another sticker to put on your phone. And I was like, that's pretty cute. Um. I don't remember what I was supposed to do today. Thought I was going to work today. I'm not. Um, it's so slow. I feel like I haven't been to work in like a month. It's a long time. And that's something I keep thinking about whenever I'm like, you know what, Katie, you need to stop going to Dunkin' every day because you're just wasting your money. But then e even as I'm saying that right now, like I know full well that I will go today to Dunkin' to get a latte. I will. Anyway, maybe I'll do a reading sprint. I don't know. Listen. I'm just bored and doing random shit, okay? I'm actually sitting in the parking lot of uh, Marshall's because I want to go in there and see if they have those, like... Do you remember those, like, head massagers that were just literally, like, tiny metal, bendy, like, 
strings. I don't know. Um, but I just have this whim last night that I want one. So I'm gonna go see if they have them. Anyway, um, I'm gonna sit in the parking lot. Why do I do this all the time? I'm gonna sit in the parking lot and I'm gonna read Speak by Lori Hulse Anderson, but it is um, artwork by Emily Carroll, which I love. So I'm gonna set a timer on my phone for like 15 minutes. And you already know I went to freaking Duncan. I went to Duncan because apparently I just hate money. I don't know. Anyway, uh, whatever. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to drink that. And then my freaking new sensor I put on, of course, is hurting. Like, what's going on? Like, I swear, it's like every single sensor I've put on in the past, like, three months has, like, hurt so bad. I don't... What am I doing wrong? Anyway, I'm going to read. They didn't have one. I walked around for, like an hour and a half <laughs> just walking perusing listening to the graveyard book by neil gaiman but i did get i didn't bring a bookmark but i got like 146 pages into speak and i'm enjoying it um i'm pretty sure like i know exactly what's happening it's like a high school girl that no one will talk to her because she called the police um at a high school party but it's pretty obvious what's actually happening. So it seems like a very big book for what I'm assuming this is leading up to, but the art style is really good and I'm enjoying it. But anyway, I'm gonna head home. God bless. Kayla and Aaron are doing another live reading sprint. This time I'm actually watching it live. Oh my God, yes. And Justin and I are talking about how we think that <laughs> that um, Tinder is the Flesh is a government conspiracy because um, I... Totally believe. Definitely a commentary on industry propaganda. Thank you. Exactly. But I am currently picking it back up with Speak, and I'm on page 156. On our, what, like, at least third reading sprint that I've taken part in. It's probably like their fourth or something. I finished Speak by, still don't know if this is how you pronounce her name, Lori Hulse Anderson. This was definitely about sexual assault. I think everybody knows what this book is about because it was made into like a really famous movie. I know I've seen the movie, but I don't really remember it that well. It was a long time ago. I think it has Kristen Stewart in it. Anyway, um, the artistry in this book is absolutely stunning stunning. Emily Carroll cannot miss. Like her artistry is just so freaking good. But I will say this book is way too long. Like, especially for a graphic novel, like this hurt holding this up. Like my wrists are tired. Um, it's way too long. It could have been like easily like hundred pages less or at least like 70, you know? Um, but it's really good. I don't know. I'm struggling because I think that for the age range that this is intended for, it would get a higher rating. Um, for me, it did feel a little dull, like as we were going through, like it's good, but it's not like enough. So I feel like I'm gonna give it like a three and a half. Um, there are parts in it that are stunning, like the last couple of pages, so good, but the rest of it does kind of like eek on, which I get is kind of the intention because she's depressed, but it wasn't as enjoyable as I feel like it could have been. Um, so I'm gonna give it a three and a half. And honestly, the half star is for the art style. And I'm considering picking up Devolution by Max Brooks, but I don't know if I'm going to have time to finish it because I do want to end this vlog today so I can edit it for tomorrow. I don't know. We'll see. All right. I am going to be ending out the vlog here, even though it is only like 6.30 p.m. on Saturday night, but I want to post this video tomorrow. And honestly, like I've just read so much so fast that I'm like, I need to take a breather, okay? And I'm actually going to just journal for the rest of the reading sprints. Now, I did get the prologue and chapter one done in Devolution, and it's a full cast narration. What? And it's like a Bigfoot thing? I don't know. Barely started it, so can't really tell you much about it. Y'all, it is 2 a.m. And I'm going to pop in here because I already filmed the outro. But listen, I finished Devolution. It, it, how is it so action-packed and so boring? Like, I, I didn't connect to the camera. Okay, here's the thing. Um, it's a full cast narration. Love that. And it's also, like, actors, like Nathan Fillion, like, and all this stuff. Like, I can't remember her name, Chris. I don't know, this other lady, but um, voices I recognize, that's great, but I didn't care. And it was just like so forgettable, so forgettable. And I was like kind of following along with the book a little bit, but it's not 
bad necessarily, but like there's nothing problematic about it, I don't think. But it's not good. Like it's these people kind of isolated in this like icy tundra. And then these freaking Bigfoot Sasquatch motherfuckers come out of nowhere. Cool. Um, it's action packed, but like I didn't give a shit. I'm sorry. I'm, t- <laughs> I'm going to give it two stars. Anyway, roll to the outro. But I'm going to tell you everything I did read because good God, did I read a lot. I read eight books in six days. How's that possible? How, how, how? It's because I basically didn't work this entire time. Like I don't, I think I went to work like one day and it was so slow. Like no one is coming in. It's the beginning of the year. Nobody comes in in January and there's just nothing to do. So I spend my time when I'm not working ferociously reading. So this is the stack of books that I read. And then, oh wait, here's another one. This is the stack of books I read plus two audiobooks that I don't own physically. And I'm going to put them in order of the least to best i would say least near the bone actually this is such an amazing readathon because i didn't have anything below three stars well no i'm gonna give near the bone two and a half stars so that's my lowest rating that's pretty phenomenal so i have near the bone which is two and a half stars and then i have speak i'm gonna do speak this is three and a half stars um, beautiful writing style, but it just took too damn long. And then I'm going to say a history of wild places. This is a really cool concept, but I'm already kind of forgetting about the book. And then I'm going to say the graveyard book by Neil Gaiman. This was also three and a half stars. It was very cute, too long, um, and a little bit meandering, but really cute, really enjoyed it. And then I will say, okay, no, this is the thing. I'm only going to put the push at number four because it was a reread. Um, but this is a five-star book. I'm literally obsessed with it. Favorite of all time. But just for the sake of it was a reread, I'm going to put it there. And then I'm going to say, oh my God. We need to do something by Max Booth, even though this is five stars. I'm going to put this below Comfort Me with Apples, which is four and a half stars, because um, this is going to stay with me. This book is going to stick with me. This is insane. And then number one goes to my biggest shame. Tinder is the flesh. I'm obsessed. Guys, um, this is written by a woman. And when I was reading this, I was like, what sick man brain is writing this? And then when I flipped and saw that it was a woman, I was like, okay, never mind. This book's amazing. Um, obsessed. So I can't believe I read so much so quickly. That is absolutely insane. And then actually on the live that they were just doing, I asked them to both recommend me an audiobook. It doesn't matter what it is. And I'm going to buy it, read it, and vlog it. I was like, I don't care. I'll do it. And they both recommended me something. So hopefully that vlog will come out before the end of the month. Not totally sure. Maybe next month. I don't know. We'll see. But thank you so much for participating. If you did participate in Winterween or just watching my video, that's really amazing. That really helps me out a lot. If you want to follow me on Goodreads and Instagram, they will be linked down below as well as a myriad of other links if you want to support this channel in any way. And I want to say, what is it that I say? Oh, I hope you're having, good God, I hope you're having an amazing day, evening, night, dusk, dawn, whatever it is you're having right now. And I will see you in a video coming very soon. Bye.